Hey guys, so I have been mentioning in a lot of videos recently about how I've been really trying to just shop my stash, condense my collection, whatever you want to call it. Basically focus on using the makeup that I have acquired through the years. And um, with that has come some messages and comments from subscribers asking me how I did that. Some suggestions because they just can't seem to like not collect makeup or you know not go into MAC for the new collection. And at first I thought this was kind of a weird request and then I thought, I don't know, maybe if I can kind of share with you my mentality behind the whole thing, maybe it might get someone else to kind of not see things my way, but kind of see their collection in a different light. Um, so I'm just going to basically tell you why I started condensing it, how I started doing it, and maybe along the way somebody will pick up a few tips or something that will help you guys to, you know, really enjoy the collection that you've obviously spent a lot of money on and not neglect products and not forget about products that you had. So I would say first and foremost, don't just focus on one brand. I feel like anyone that's just starting either watching or making YouTube videos nowadays is a lot more lucky than when we all were starting. Um, like I think I've been on YouTube for like three or four years now and I have to I have to say like when I first started watching videos I watched videos for about three months before I actually started making my own videos everything in every video was Mac every collection every haul I mean every new collection you could expect to haul um, every tutorial was using Mac products every review was about a Mac product that's all I knew I heard about the other brands here and there but the girls that I was subscribed to really enjoyed MAC products and that's when my collection kind of started to get out of control because I became to like I got to the point where I felt like every time they released a new collection like I wanted to have that from that collection if I didn't get that I was missing out and at the time I could kind of see how it was because I really didn't have a collection at the time so it was fun to kind of acquire stuff and build my collection, but then it just kind of got out of control. I feel like this is like a reality TV show about like my strange addiction. Makeup. <laughs> like I feel like I'm in an, uh, I'm like an AA meeting for makeup people. But um, I would say like I really just started to change my mentality probably in the last year. I don't know if it's just getting older or just enjoying different things aside from makeup. Like, I feel like makeup was just my life for so long there. And now I'm, like, really enjoying clothes and especially jewelry. I mean, jewelry's always been, like, at the top of my list. But I've really just been enjoying spending my money on investing my money in more quality pieces of clothing, a nicer handbag, um, nice pieces of jewelry, things like that. So, and I didn't feel... Like, I was missing out on anything because I started to realize, like, especially with MAC, I have to say, with them releasing all their new collections, I think it just got to the point where I just I just got tired of following them and obsessing over them and making my list and rushing to the website in hopes that nothing would sell out. And I got sick of calling around to MAC stores and, like, finding out if they had this product which was sold out and asking them to ship it to me and, like, you know, seeing every other haul and being like, oh, I really need that product. I just got to be like a chore, like a job. I feel like I was constantly like, you know, Googling, searching for the next Mac collection and making my little list. And I think the thing that started this all was I re came to the conclusion that I really did not like Mac lip glosses. And I feel like back then I really like Every collection that came out, I bought a lip gloss. I literally think I've owned at one point every Dazzle gloss that they ever made. Come today, I hate MAC Dazzle glasses. I hate MAC lip glosses. And that's only due to the fact that I've tried other brands now. In the beginning, that was all I knew, so I loved it. I thought it was great. But now it's like there's all these other brands that are less sticky and, you know, last longer and look nicer. And so... I kind of just let Mac go by the wayside, but it all started because I just got, like, I just, one day I was just like, you know, enough's enough with these collections. Like, it's literally a full-time job to keep up with them, and it's makeup. And, like, I think I just became mindful that everything they were releasing, I was bound at that point to have something in my collection similar. It might not have been from Mac, but who cares? Like, ultimately, nobody knows you're wearing Mac Cosmetics unless you tell them. To them, to anyone looking at you, it just looks like you have like brown eyeshadow on or pink blush on. Like nobody knows what it is. So really like who cares? So 
with that I think came like me being exposed to other YouTubers, new new girls starting to make videos, um, exposing me to different makeup brands, and it got really exciting for me again because I started to see like all these other brands out there and these unique products that MAC didn't make and like I never saw from MAC. And it was also really nice too because these other collections, like like I'll say primarily Chanel, NARS, Benefit, they would release like a new product here or there, but it was like every couple of months or like a new, you know, the spring collection or the holiday collection. And it became exciting again to look forward to those collections because to me I felt like they really just honed in on perfecting that quarterly collection they were releasing instead of, you know, just releasing a collection every other week it felt like with MAC where it was just kind of duping the same things. Um, but I think to start, I just really like, I think what started my condensing is the clear cube. When I condensed, I had to condense my makeup collection. I said to myself, if I'm going to buy this clear cube, which is expensive, then I promised myself that if I could not fit the makeup in my clear cube, I was not keeping it. So I had blog sales. I gave a lot of makeup away to my mom, to my friends. Um, some of the stuff that I never even opened or touched and I still had receipts for, I was able to return like to Sephora. Um, and I just like going through and, and taking my makeup out of my old storage collection, putting it into my clear cube and learning how to like fit everything. I was starting to find like all these new products that I was like, Oh my God, I forgot that I had that. Oh my God. That, like I've been looking for this product. You just like start to kind of feel like excited again about makeup. So I think that's number one. My number one tip, if you are trying to condense your collection is just spend a couple of hours, depending on how big your collection is, just going through your collection, reorganize it. It really just gets you to see things that you might not always be seeing. And it's really fun and exciting to like find things in the back of your drawers that you forgot that you had. I'm going to link both of my makeup collection videos below because you could see my first one that I ever did, how big it was, and then the one with the clear cube is my most recent. The other thing I did was I um, got rid of mostly all of my backups on blog sale because I just had so much makeup that I was like, I'm never going to get through the one that I have. There's no reason for me to be hoarding these backups. I will tell you that I do have backups of Viva Glam Cindy now, thank God, it's my favorite lipstick, Stereo Rose MSF. Pleasureful um, Cream Blush and Stark Naked Blush, which is my favorite. Those are the only backups that I have. Oh, and I think I have a Bobbi Brown corrector that I got at a CCL, a couple um, corrector's concealers because they were discounted. But that's it. I got rid of all that. And you know what? It felt really good to just, like, declutter. Um, the other thing, too, like, when I was putting out my blog sales, I would really look through my whole collection and if I had like two lipsticks of the same color I would get rid of one like I didn't need two of the same color and that frees up more space not only for new things but just to really like enjoy the makeup that you have and use the makeup that you have and so that's really what I did I got rid of my backups I um, really tried to like see if I had dupes of things like for example this last blog sale I had I opened up my MAC palettes like I had a whole color palette from MAC of all different colors, pinks, purples, blues, that I have not worn in probably years. And my rule of thumb is, and I do this with my clothes, if I haven't worn it in a year, I get rid of it. Because if I haven't worn it in a year, I'm, chances are I'm not going to wear it. So all the makeup in general that I hadn't touched in a year, I got rid of. Like, for example, Club Eyeshadow from MAC used to be one of my favorites. And then I picked up this Comfort Zone palette from Wet n Wild, and there's like an exact dupe in this palette. I don't need two of the same color, so I got rid of my MAC shadow because to me this is a better deal because I not only do I get a dupe, but I get all these other colors. This is travel friendly. Um, so little things like that I did. Um, what else? What else did I do? I did depot pretty much all that I could with um, my blushes and my eyeshadows. Originally I was like really hell-bent on wanting to keep all the fancy packaging and I think for me that I just kind of outgrew the packaging some of it. I will say I did keep some packaging um, and I did keep some blushes. Um, I actually depotted all of my, my MAC eyeshadows but I did keep some blushes in their pan form just because they're my favorite. Like on a mission I kept just for the simple fact that I travel with these a lot. When I travel these are the ones I take stark naked. Um, enough set or no uh, otherworldly so I do have some of these like in their original packaging but for the most part I depotted everything and that was a whole like 
weekend chore for me. Um, it took a lot of time, but there again, like I condensed a whole lot of space in my clear cube because I put everything into palettes and I got to back to mackle for a whole bunch of stuff and I freed up all that room um, of most of my stuff. What else can I tell you? I think from there on, I just kind of like even now, I don't go, I will say with the exception of nail polish because <laughs> I don't think that addiction is ever going to end. But even with nail polish, like, I only buy colors now if I don't have anything else like that like that in my collection. If I have something similar in my collection, I don't buy the same bottle twice. And so I've gotten really into looking at um, nail blogs. Like, I'll just type in a nail collection and tons of nail blogs will pop up. And so I look at swatches, like, when the collection's released to see, oh, do I have something like that? Do I not? Um... And same with, like, the, the collections. Usually through Twitter or through the blogs or through magazines, you can kind of get a heads up of which collections are releasing from when. A lot of the bloggers, like the bigger bloggers, the beauty bloggers, they get, like, the PR releases and the press samples and the collections before they release, and they are great about having, like, the swatches all up. So you can kind of shop online before it releases and know where you want to spend your money. I've come to the... Like, I now... I really enjoy going to Sephora and to MAC and because I feel like I'm on a mission to like find something new and unique that I don't already have in my collection. Like when Benefit's Hervana blush came out, I think that was like the last like big makeup thing that I bought. I was so excited because for one, I love Benefit blushes, but for another, I didn't have any other blush color compared to that. So to me, like buying Hervana blush was so exciting for me. Um... Like, the recent MAC um, lipsticks that came out are gorgeous, and I know they sold out really fast with the new collections, but I looked at those online, and I was like, I have so many colors similar. Okay, maybe they're not exact, but chances are they might not look exact next to each other, but on the lips, who's going to tell the difference? Um, I got rid of a whole bunch of lip gloss from MAC. Like, I, I pretty much got rid of all my lip gloss from MAC. Um, I really love Revlon's lip gloss. I really love these um, NYC Gliders lip glosses. They're not sticky. They're really nice. Chanel glosses are like my favorite. Um, and I just really like, I've, I, it's almost like you get very excited to use up products now. Like my Black Track Fluid line, it's just about at the end. I'm basically scraping along the sides. I don't know if you can see this. When this runs out, I have the Inglot AMC liner. So I'm not going to go out and buy another Black Track Fluid line until I use that up. And once I use that up and see, like, which one I like better, that's the one I'll repurchase. Um, I think, like, other things, like Mac Bear Study Paint Pot is probably one of my favorites. And I had Steal a Kitten um, little smudge pot in my collection. I sold that in a blog sale because, really, they're the same color. I don't need both of them. And I just, I feel like I just became more realistic about it and I really wanted to free up space for the unique products like when I went out and purchased Modern Mercury and was looking all over for that at first when I heard about it I was like oh I don't need another highlighter you guys saw my MSF collection um, but then when I saw swatches and stuff online I saw the the light and the luminescence that this gives off I don't get that from any other highlighter that I own so I didn't feel guilty splurging and buying this because I really don't have any other highlighter like that and had I, you know, if I, like, lose all my MSFs from MAC, I think I'd be okay if I just had that Modern Mercury color. So I think that's another way to think about it, too. Like, would you be okay? Like, it's not going to be the end of the world if you don't have this product or have that product. And it's gotten really refreshing to just, like, not really care so much about MAC collections. Like, every time a new MAC collection releases, I always get questions from people on Twitter and and through my in inbox on YouTube, like, are you going to get anything from the new collection? And it's always like, no, I'm not even going to look at it because I just, I have no desire. It's the other part of it, I've really been enjoying, like, discovering new drugstore makeup and finding dupes. And therefore, like, it used to be when I would find the dupe, I still wanted to have, like, the original product. And now I'm like, if I can find a dupe from Revlon, I'm not going to go crazy killing myself trying to find, like, the actual product. Like, I don't really care. Um... So I think, like, my whole mentality changed, and as I started to see my con my collection kind of, I don't want to say shrink, because it's still, like, don't get me wrong, it's still a pretty big collection, but I can honestly tell you that I know everything that's in my collection. I use everything in my collection. I mean, granted, not all the same day, but I rotate my makeup. Like, I do have my, you know, my skincare stays the same, painterly paint pot or some kind of base on my eyes. Like, there's some things that stay the same, but other than that, like, I rotate my blushes. I don't wear the same eye makeup 
all the time. Um, and it's kind of it's kind of become really fun to just shop my stash and remember all the things that I have. Um, I still really like MAC. I think they have amazing quality. I wish that people would spend more attention to their permanent collection because I feel like that gets really neglected and some of my most favorite products are in their permanent collection. But um, I've just really enjoyed getting to experience other brands and finding unique products like Estee Lauder, like that highlight powder. I never thought of Estee Lauder as a brand I ever wanted to shop. That was always like the brand my mom used. And when they released that highlighter, I would have never guessed that was from Estee Lauder. And now it's almost like you see other companies trying to dupe it, like Laura Mercier when they came out with their illuminating powder. Like, uh, it's crazy. Like, even the Armani Eyes to Kill. Now you see all the drugstore companies, like, duping. It's just crazy to me. So I feel like... I just, my phone's ringing and I'm just going to ignore that. I feel like I just rambled and gave you a whole bunch of fluff, but I basically just wanted to let you know kind of how my collection went from the very first video that I filmed to what it is now, where it all fits in my clear cube. I hope that um, this helps at least one person. My biggest advice would just be to really do your research on the products, look at the colors online, Focus on your collection, like spend a day, every once in a while, every couple of months, just spend an hour or two just going through your collection, reorganizing it. I think that would help a lot of people when you reorganize because you're going to realize like, oh, I forgot I had that or like, these are the exact same products and I have two of them. And so I think that's the biggest thing. And then once you start to see like, wow, I have like five of the same product, I, I'm officially like a makeup hoarder gone crazy. I think that's when your whole mindset will change and you'll really start to kind of enjoy using, like pick your favorite of those five and get rid of the other one. And then just, you kind of, it's almost fun too to find your holy grail products. Like I have to say when I discovered Cebu skincare, I never thought in a million years I would stick with it for as long as I have. But now that I've found it and seen the difference that it's made in my skin, I have no desire to shop for any other skincare, to take anyone else's recommendations. Like I am so hell-bent on that skincare line. I'm so loyal to it. Like, I have no desire to watch other skincare videos. I have no desire to try any products out when I'm at the salons getting a facial. Like, I just have no desire to do that. And it feels really good to know, like, you have this regimen and you have these products that you can rely on and that do wonders for your skin. And I feel like it's almost kind of the same with makeup. Like, like, Prestige My Blackest Lashes is my most favorite mascara. Once I wean through all the mascaras that I have, that will be the one mascara that I continue to purchase over and over and over again. And think about that. Then you have, you don't have a mascara drawer anymore. You have one mascara and how much space that frees up for your other stuff. So, like, my big biggest thing where I have the most of would probably be blushes and eyeshadows. Just because, like, I can wear, I, I wear, like, I could wear more than one eyeshadow a day. I layer my blushes. So those things, it's fun to kind of play around with. And those are where I kind of allow myself to, you know, buy an extra blush here or there or buy some extra eyeshadow because, and another thing, powder blushes and powder eyeshadows really don't go bad. Whereas mascaras, lip glosses, you kind of have to watch the expiration dates on watch, not that there's dated, but you know, you don't want to keep them for too long. You don't want to, um, wait until they get gunky and goopy and so that was my big ramble. I hope this helped someone. And if you guys have any other questions, leave them in the comments below. Or if you have any other suggestions about how you kind of condensed your collection and learned how to shop your stash, leave that in the comments below too because I think this will all help everyone. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.